Hello students, a very good morning to you. We are continuing chapter 6 of class 10 that is life process. And we have completed the topics that uh, representing the life process means your nutrition, respiration and transportation. In transportation, we see that how in human beings different substances are transported through circulatory system means how heart and different blood vessels and blood capillaries help in the transportation. Now we will study about transportation in plants. As we know that living organism means both plants and animals. So whether plants, if animals show circulation of different substances, then plant also show different type of transportation. So major transportation occurs in plant through translocation. Through translocation. Translocation means long distance transportation in plants. Long distance transportation in plants through xylem and phloem. But in your book, this is only written as phloem. But both included in translocation, that is both xylem and phloem. So you can write translocation is the process or this is the long distance transportation of substances in plants through xylem and phloem. This xylem and phloem is called as vascular tissue. Xylem and phloem are called as vascular tissue. Why they are called as vascular tissue? As they are combined with the help of cambium. You see, the xylem and phloem are look like this. This is phloem. The upper part is phloem. This is phloem. And this is xylem. So they together combine vascular tissue or vascular component. Now let's see. Which substances are transported through vascular tissue? As I know, phloem transport food. Phloem transport food, whereas xylem transport water and minerals. Water and minerals. Here, students, remember one thing: xylem can transport organic substances. Xylem can't transport. Can't transport organic substances. Phloem can transport organic substance. Organic substance means living substance. Means food. This is prepared food by using different minerals. So let's see how this transportation occurs. Suppose this is a plant. You can see this. Suppose this is a plant. This is a this is a plant. This is root. And this part is C contains leaves. As we know, the movement of water, which is called as H2O, in the direction towards leaves, means it goes towards the leaves. Why? Because leaves synthesize food and they need water. But the food synthesized by the phloem, by the leaf is transported in the direction of root, means root is also need food and other branches or other parts of the plant also need food. That's why the movement of food is both directions. That's why we can say that the direction of xylem, the direction of xylem is, the direction of xylem is unidirectional. But the direction of phloem is, direction of phloem is bidirectional. You already have studied in the classroom. You can, this is your revision. So I hope you understand it clearly that xylem, the transport of xylem occurs in the plant in a single direction whereas the transport through phloem takes place in both the direction as the phloem transport food and food is needed by all the parts of the plant. So, as we know, plants synthesize carbohydrate type of food, carbohydrate or glucose type of food. That food after synthesize used by the plant and 
some are transported to different part of the plant and the remaining part of the food is stored in the form of starch so you can write the food synthesized as carbohydrate food synthesized as carbohydrate but stored in the form of stored in the form of starch clear students food synthesized in the form of or as carbohydrate but stored in the form of starch so let's think of a situation if there is no photosynthesis occur suppose in winter you can see there is no sunlight available for many days for 15 days 16 days there is no sunlight if sunlight is not available then how can the plant synthesize their food it is impossible for the plant to synthesize the food then how in that situation the plant able to keep alive itself here is the question that should be think by us so how this process occur and how plants make them alive in that drastic situations or in that bad situations so what happen during photosynthesis as i have told you the food is used by the plant and the rest of the food which remains which is not used they are stored in the form of starch in different parts of the plant suppose in stem in root or in any other parts of the plant then the part where food is stored is called as sink remember one is your source and another is your sink source is the reason where photosynthesis occurs this is the reason this is the reason where photosynthesis occurs that's why it is called source source means where photosynthesis occurs so in a plant which is the source we can say that leaf is the source as leaf synthesizes the food but as i have told you the food after used by the plant stored then where it is stored it is stored in the sink s i n k sink you can write the part of the plant the part of the plant where food is stored and you know that the food is stored in the form of starch so as we discussed that in winter how plants make themselves alive in winter the food is transported from sink to source when listen attentively when photosynthesis occur then the movement of food is from source to sink during photosynthesis movement is from source to sink but when there will be no photosynthesis occur in the lack of sunlight then how will the plant able to survive itself at that time the food stored in the sink move in the direction of source if you see in your surrounding then some plants shedded their leaves and in a plant there is no leaf you think if there is no leaf then how after some days the plant bears leaf in it this is the reason means the food synthesized by the plant is not consumed by itself completely they are stored and during its uh, when it needs food then its transportation occurs so here two type of transportation i have told you one is from source to sink that is takes place during photosynthesis and another is from sink to source that is takes place when photosynthesis not occur means when there is no sunlight available so here you know that how transportation of food occur then which type of transportation which type of food you know here that starts and in case of xylem as i have told you xylem not only transports water but also transports all the minerals that present inside the soil like calcium magnesium zinc molybdenum Uh, nitro uh, sorry nitrogen is not transported through uh, xylem it is captured by um, the phloem directly from the air so the nutrients water and minerals are absorbed by the root 
means by the help of xylem and transported to different parts specially to the leaf and in leaf photosynthesis occur and after photosynthesis the food is transported to different parts of the plant and the remaining part of the food is stored in the form of starch this is how transportation occur in the plant clear students again as we know that phloem alone can transport food and xylem alone can transport water sorry xylem can transport water alone but phloem can transport food alone in long distance transportation in this case xylem and phloem together combine to form vascular tissue as i have told you clear and they transport the food then what are the different elements of phloem and what are the different elements of xylem you can see xylem has four different elements xylem has four different elements four different elements that is tracheids vessels xylem parenchyma and xylem fiber again phloem has also four different elements so what are the different elements of phloem let's see phloem has also four different element phloem has four different element that is sieve tube companion cell phloem parenchyma and phloem fiber so what is the role of these elements of xylem and phloem as i have told you xylem alone can transport water but phloem alone can transport food that's why they combine with each other and uh, as we know when you are taking food into your mouth do you directly swallow the food if you uh, put a chapati piece of chapati inside your mouth do you swallow this directly or you chew this for a time and when it get converted into liquid then you swallow like this so in this case what happen exactly the food can transported that's why it needs a liquid medium which is provided by the xylem so it makes association for long distance transportation but in small distance transportation the food can be or the water can be diffused to the nearby part through different means that is through either through diffusion or osmosis so what are what is the rule see what is the importance of this sieve tube sieve tube and companion cells main function is to transport food and here the phloem parenchyma is the living substance that makes the element and phloem fiber is the non living substance which provides strength or rigidity or the mechanical support during transportation as you know during transportation maybe the cells through which food is transported get uh, damaged or get ruptured again tracheids and vessels mainly conducts water but here the xylem parenchyma and xylem fiber xylem parenchyma is the living substance and made up of thin parenchymatous cells whereas xylem fibers gives mechanical mechanical strength to the elements or to the xylem that's why the together combiningly help in the transportation of food and water in the long distance transportation so during the transportation of water and food there is transpiration also occur do you know what is transpiration transpiration is the loss of water in the form of water vapor loss of water in the form of water vapor so we can say that transpiration is the loss of water in the form of water vapor due to transpiration rainfall occurs and due to transpiration the climatic condition or the temperature of our earth atmosphere or near the tree 
reduced up to 15 to 20 degree celsius if the temperature in an open area is 50 degree then it is reduced up to 15 degree near the tree this is because of transpiration and due to transpiration the water absorption by the xylem by the roots occurs very rapidly so transpiration also helps in the absorption or intake of water through roots means by the help of xylem this type of water conduction is called as transpirational pool means more is the transpiration more is the absorption that's why you should have to know about transpiration that transpiration is an important process in plants which helps indirectly in the absorption of water by the roots and through the xylem so this is all about your transportation in plants